Good afternoon or good morning and welcome and thank you for joining us for today's launch day showcase special event, Multiply Your Processing Power to Get 10x the Performance. I'm your host, Scott Lowe with Actual Tech Media. This is a very special launch event featuring PlyOps that will introduce you to their breakthrough technology that they've been developing to drive performance and efficiency of servers and storage in the data center. This is really critical when you consider some of the newer kinds of workloads that we're starting to operate in data center environments. And you're gonna learn a lot today from the great content that PlyOps is bringing to you. Before we get started, let's talk about some housekeeping. First of all, if you have questions, this is really important, please make sure you ask them. There's a questions button in your console. Please make liberal use of it if you hear anything today that makes you go, huh, I wanna know more. In fact, if you have a great question, in our opinion, it may be worth $50. We will be awarding a $50 gift card to the person that asks the best question. You'll also notice the handouts tab in your console. This contains several documents you can download to learn even more about PlyOps beyond the conversation we're having today. And of course, there are prizes. In fact, there are a number of awesome prizes we're giving away today. There's an Oculus Quest, a Sonos speaker, architecture Lego set, PlayStation 5, and the grand prize is an e-bike. Prize winners will be selected at the end of the event, but you must be present to win. And we will announce the winners live during the event. And we're going to get started here in just a second with the PlyOps presentation. Please know that immediately following the PlyOps presentation, we'll be doing Q&A. So again, if you hear something that you'd like to understand more, please ask a question at any time during this presentation. We'll also be asking you some poll questions so we can learn more about you immediately following the PlyOps presentation. And without further ado, introducing PlyOps. Ones and zeros. Lots of ones and zeros. It's just data, right? Cold and abstract? Not at all. Data is at the heart of every wonderful new breakthrough in the world. With data, we can create vaccines that save millions of lives in a global pandemic. We can model weather, forecast severe storm trajectories, and respond appropriately. We can create modern marvels like self-driving cars that take in and react to trillions of bits of sensor data. There's untold beauty and power in data. If we can just find a way to harness it, wrangle it, process it, manage it, save it, this challenge is getting harder and harder. Soon, we'll be creating more information in one day than was created in the entire 20th century. Traditional data center architecture is already maxed out and expensive and getting slower as data volumes increase. We need new data architecture for handling huge amounts of data and not just incremental improvement. We need a data architecture revolution. The world has been transformed by data, and we are keeping that transformation going. Hi, I'm Uri Beitler, CEO and founder of PlyOps. Data is one of the most powerful tools we have to make the world a better place for ourselves and our families. However, with over a decade of experience in analyzing and architecting data storage, it's become clear that we have hit a wall. The data center architecture of yesterday is not compatible with the data needs of today. And tomorrow's data needs, don't get me even started on this. I found in PlyOps when I saw how massive data growth is colliding with legacy compute and storage shortcomings. Slowdowns in computing, storage bottlenecks, diminishing networking efficiency. Our collective ability to innovate, our ability to use increasing volumes of data to make the world better. The challenge keeps getting harder. The solution for today and tomorrow needs to be more than incremental. A few percentage points will not get the job done. As data grows exponentially, our ability to handle the data must grow as well. At PlyOps, we knew we needed a revolutionary data processor, one that doesn't take a revolution to deploy at scale. So we got to it with some of the brightest engineering minds in the world. Then we partnered with the world's leading technology companies to make our vision a reality. Companies like NVIDIA, 
Intel, Western Digital, Xilinx, and more. And together, we have done it. We have delivered a solution with the capacity to solve the data challenges of tomorrow and sustain the momentum of data-powered innovation. As technology penetrates every aspect of our world, across all industries, data storage requirements are doubling every three years. At the same time, our capacity for compute is doubling every 20 years. We're on a collision course. Where is all this data coming from? We can look at breakthrough technologies like AI and ML, big data analytics, 5G, IoT, and other modern applications. They've changed the world, and data is the fuel. By 2025, the world will generate 175 zettabytes per year. That's 175 trillion gigabytes, or 175 followed by 21 zeros. A few years ago, SSDs arrived to solve performance problems, and soon 75% of enterprise data will be stored in flash. But today's data volumes have exposed the inefficiency of compute in legacy architecture, and all of these apps are at risk. Processors are overloaded, while fast SSDs are underutilized. We need more application speed, more storage capacity, more data protection, more scalability. But the only solution today is to throw money at the problem and add more servers, more SSDs, a bigger data center footprint. Infrastructure teams and budgets are consumed with just maintaining and supporting today's apps without enough money or time for new applications that can generate insights and revenue. Infrastructure architects, product managers, and CFOs are all demanding a better way, looking to do more with less, leveraging infrastructure they already have. Where do you start? When AI was taking off and workloads were the bottleneck, GPUs were introduced to solve the problem, accelerating AI 10 to 20 times over and resulting in a huge gain in performance and efficiency. What if you could use this same approach for other applications? What if we could create a processor, a hardware solution, not software, that's designed to accelerate the most popular and demanding workloads, to do more with the infrastructure you already have. Introducing the power of X. Hi, I'm Angela Rastani, Vice President of Marketing at PlyOps. The PlyOps Extreme Data Processor, XDP for short, is the new benchmark for application acceleration. PlyOps XDP multiplies the effectiveness of your data center infrastructure investments. 10x your performance, 5x your cost savings, 6x your capacity. Multiply your ability to respond to rapidly changing business conditions and better support the ever-increasing workload demands facing today's businesses. Just as GPUs overcome processing inefficiencies to accelerate the performance of artificial intelligence and advanced analytics, PlyOps XDP overcomes storage inefficiencies to massively accelerate performance and dramatically lower overall infrastructure costs for databases, analytics, machine learning, and more. PlyOps XDP is delivered on an easy-to-deploy, low-profile PCIe card that radically simplifies the way data is processed and SSD storage is managed. Installation is plug-and-play using a standard block interface with no application changes. And XDP scales across compute, memory, networking, and storage. The result? An exponential increase in performance, reliability, capacity, and efficiency. With PlyOps Extreme Data Processor, we are changing the data center of today and tomorrow. Not only can you keep your infrastructure running with PlyOps XDP Advanced Data Protection, but XDP also improves operational efficiency to reduce server sprawl and your data center footprint. Sounds like magic, doesn't it? Let's see how it works. The world's most critical applications run on SSDs. Nearly all of them use storage engines, a universal software component that lays out application data on a storage device on behalf of the application. These steps include compressing, packing, sorting, indexing, and garbage collection. While not computationally challenging in a traditional hard drive setup, with SSDs capable of 1,000 times higher performance, it's a very different story. One way software keeps up with higher performance is to take shortcuts. It won't pack data as tightly. Other shortcuts result in write amplification. Using the SSD as a workspace results in 10 to 50 times more writes than needed. SSDs have limited write endurance, 
Like tires on a car, they wear out with use. This directly impacts SSD expected life and overall cost. With these shortcuts, storage engines can consume up to half the CPU cores in a server, taking away from intended use. With data growth accelerating and Moore's Law slowing, this bad problem will get much worse. So the CPU is choking and computational power is gobbled up while your expensive SSDs sit idle. And we're not even talking about data protection yet. With ultra-fast NVMe SSDs, many organizations avoid using local data protection methods, having to constantly rebuild after drive failures, consuming even more CPU, SSD, and network bandwidth. Or they use SSD mirroring as a brute force solution to protect against drive failures, resulting in high costs. Add all this overhead, more SSDs for better write performance, more SSDs for endurance, more SSDs for data protection, gets you six times more physical storage than the size of data you're storing. PlyOps solves these problems with one easy to deploy extreme data processor. PlyOps XDP combines multiple key data and storage technologies into one device that together multiply their benefit. First, we implemented a hardware-based storage engine using breakthrough data structures and algorithms to deliver hundreds of Xeon Gold Core's equivalent performance, thereby eliminating the inefficiencies of software-based solutions. PlyOps Extreme Data Processor eliminates SSD write amplification and wasted space while significantly extending endurance, performance, and usable capacity. Second, XDP's integrated high-speed compression greatly reduces data even after software-based compression, while freeing the CPU from this burden. Third, XDP takes complete control of your SSDs to protect data from drive failures by only rebuilding actual data instead of an entire drive, like traditional RAID architectures, resulting in zero trade-offs in performance or capacity to provide drive fail protection. Finally, PlyOps Extreme Data Processor is easy to integrate with block mode compatibility for literally every application. A native key value mode seamlessly integrates with hundreds of applications for maximum performance boost. PlyOps XDP works with any server and SSD. With one solution that works across your data center, PlyOps Extreme Data Processor dramatically improves application performance while slashing overall infrastructure cost, enabling you to do more with less. Performance, reliability, Capacity, efficiency. PlyOps Extreme Data Processor exponentially increases these four key capabilities by radically simplifying the way data is processed and SSD storage is managed. Hi, I'm Steve Fingerhut, President and Chief Business Officer at PlyOps. Let's walk through each of these four pillars. Performance. PlyOps XDP boosts the performance of your most business critical applications. Our hardware accelerated solution eliminates bottlenecks, latency, and server sprawl that cost time, resources, and most importantly, business opportunities. Our customers and partners are seeing incredible numbers across a range of popular applications where they use the most SSDs. For example, with RocksDB, we see up to a 20x gain in performance compared to software. This comes with rock solid, very low QoS, as measured by 4.9's latency. RocksDB is a key component of many popular applications, including Ceph, Nutanix, Spark, and Redis, and many others. We're deploying Redis with up to 7x the performance of software, matching the performance and latency of DRAM. XDP achieves this at a fraction of the cost using low-cost SSDs. With MariaDB, MySQL, MongoDB, and many other popular databases, PlyOps Extreme Data Processor more than doubles performance over a software-only setup, and using a standard block interface that requires zero application changes. Reliability. 24 by 7 operations have no tolerance for inconsistent performance or unplanned disruptions. In traditional setups, the price of reliability is performance but not with PlyOps. XDP features drive fail protection, which enables users to maintain constant data availability and deliver on stringent SLAs with no hit to performance. 
let's compare XTP to classic RAID configurations from an application performance perspective. RAID 0 is fast, but has no data protection. RAID 5 provides protection, but is almost never used with SSDs because of the severe performance penalty. FlyOps XDP is different. When an SSD crashes with XDP, your application still delivers incredible performance. Two times software RAID, even during the drive rebuild. FlyOps XDP delivers the same level of protection as RAID 5. As for performance, well, it leaves RAID 5 and RAID 0 in the dust. Let me say that another way. XDP at its slowest provides twice the performance of RAID 0 at its best, and does so with reliable data protection that RAID 0 doesn't offer at all. This is a game changer for database, NoSQL, software-defined storage, and distributed file systems. Capacity. Data growth is a never-ending battle, but without efficiently increasing your storage capacity, you're not going to realize your full business potential. Just adding more SSDs to today's software-only architecture is too expensive, making it impractical to keep up with growth. And with the current chip shortage, even if you have an unlimited budget, you may not even get all the servers and SSDs you want. FlyOps gives visionary companies a competitive advantage. FlyOps Extreme Data Processor inline compression and data reduction technology provides up to 6x space savings compared to a software-only solution. And you get these gains in capacity without affecting performance. First, FlyOps XTP implements powerful inline compression that even reduces space consumed on SSDs by 50% or more over software-based compression. Second, with XDP, you actually get to use more of your disk space for data compared to RAID 1 or 10, which wastes half your disks before you save a single bit. And with XDP, there is no dedicated hot spare sitting idle and empty while you struggle to meet demands. Third, most companies limit how much they fill their drives to account for SSDs slowing performance and increased endurance consumption as the drive fills. FlyOps XDP delivers the high performance you see here, even at 100% full. Combined with native thin provisioning, FlyOps XDP lets you use your storage for its intended purpose, quickly storing and accessing your data. Another key benefit of FlyOps Extreme Data Processor is that it reduces writes to SSDs by up to 90% and carefully manages those reduced writes to SSDs. A key challenge for QLC SSDs is their limited random write performance and write endurance. For a 70-30 random read-write workload, XDP delivers an 18x increase in IOPS performance over software only, and 30x for a random 50-50 workload. FlyOps XDP increases endurance up to 10x for both TLC and QLC and lets you take advantage of the lowest cost zoned namespace or ZNS enabled SSDs, all with no application changes required. And XDP works with Optane technology from Intel, significantly increasing performance per CPU core, enabling more scaling for your investment. Efficiency. PlyOps offers the most efficient, affordable approach to supporting new peak workloads while slashing costs. PlyOps Extreme Data Processor is one solution for every workload, optimizing your data center infrastructure footprint. Here are a couple real-world examples of how PlyOps XDP delivers huge value. Let's look at a large e-tailer wanting to efficiently scale performance. Their application required 150,000 queries per second across 31 terabytes of user data, running on RAID 10. Implementing PlyOps XDP, they reduced the ratio of servers by three to one, while offering 58% more usable capacity and with high performance drive fail protection. They got all these benefits and cut CapEx by 54%. In another example, a top SaaS provider had been forced to use RAID 0 for their storage architecture with no data protection because RAID 5 was way too slow 
and RAID 10 was too expensive. They had been paying the price on the customer experience side. Without any data protection, they suffered from nearly 600 database failover events per year. By implementing PlyOps Extreme Data Processor, they too are getting better performance along with higher server node reliability. The customer will see zero server failures per year with PlyOps Drive Fail Protection while also getting more usable capacity. They are saving 50% in CapEx with 66% more usable capacity and providing their customers with much better reliability and an improved experience. I'm Stephen Foskett, publisher of Gestalt IT and founder of Tech Field Day. We've been working with PlyOps for some time now, and we're happy to see the official launch of the PlyOps Extreme Data Processor. In my role, I hear from end users and companies dealing with the exponential growth of data and increasing demands for performance. All of these companies were quick to adopt SSD technology, but now they're seeing that processor performance hasn't kept pace. As an industry, we need to rethink data center architecture. We need a next generation data center that improves performance and efficiency in enterprise and cloud infrastructure to handle data intensive applications like analytics, database, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And companies need to get more out of their data center footprint. The influencers that we work with have been impressed with the revolutionary approach from PlyOps, which radically simplifies how data is processed and stored to flash and multiplies storage efficiency. PlyOps has created a new category of product to solve the critical challenges for database and storage architects. And the XDP has done it in a way that is both simple and amazingly efficient. At NVIDIA, we pride ourselves on having led the way through a number of computer revolutions. From the GPU, which originally revolutionized computer graphics and now has revolutionized artificial intelligence, to the DPU, or data processing unit, which accelerates, offloads, and secures data movement in the data center and on the edge. Another revolution in the data center was the conversion of storage media from hard disk to solid state storage or SSDs. Here, we're proud to have partnered with PlyOps to support them as they bring their unique solution to this market. We agree with the PlyOps vision that data intensive applications will be a big part of tomorrow's innovations. So it's imperative to architect the computing world for what's coming next. We have worked with PlyOps as they develop their solutions that can combine NVIDIA data center GPU and DPU product lines with PlyOps technology. This partnership provides an important component for NVIDIA to continue leading the way through the AI computer revolution. PlyOps' extreme data processor gives our customers an important tool they can use to accelerate and cost reduce data intensive SSD based applications. With today's launch of Labs XDP, we're decoupling innovation from Moore's Law. I'm Moshe Twito, CTO and co-founder of PlyOps. In the past, software developers could count on Moore's Law to deliver faster performance with each generation of CPU. But Moore's Law is slowing to a crawl right when data-intensive cloud and enterprise applications like relational and NoSQL databases, analytics and machine learning are booming and software-based solutions have run out of gas too. At PlyOps, we believe it's imperative to re-architect the computing world. Your ability to innovate can't be dependent on the number of transistors on a chip or the inherent limits of a CPU. PlyOps XDP is a paradigm shift. Using a specialized chip, we were able to implement innovative, computationally intense data structure technologies which achieve the theoretical performance limits. XDP solves the challenges of massive data and saturated CPUs in a new way by making an easy-to-use hardware solution do the work of multiplying your computing power and multiplying your ability to innovate. Today marks the start of a new era. I'm proud of the revolution we are ushering in with our first product offering today. This is just the beginning of an amazing journey and the start of an amazing new era for innovation. PlyOps technology is more than just a data processor. It's enabling a better world by impacting climate change and enabling lower-cost cloud-based services in developing economies. 
Consider this paradox. To solve climate change, we're going to need lots of computing power and data to track and model every bit of weather, every emission. But the data centers serving this data revolution are consuming a large and rapidly growing share of the world's energy and emitting a shocking level of CO2. If we keep with traditional data center architecture using general purpose processors, there's a limit to the benefits that powerful computing can provide. And we hurt the planet in the process. With PlyOps Extreme Data Processor, we can do better. PlyOps technology is inherently more power efficient than traditional forms of computing. XDP delivers the equivalent of hundreds of high-performance server cores at one-seventh the power of a single server CPU. With the top 100 data centers deploying XDP broadly, they will consume 25% less electricity, the equivalent of 60 coal-fired power plants, emitting 57 million fewer metric tons of CO2 emissions per year. That's the equivalent of converting 35 million cars from gas to electric power. Reducing the climate impact is just one of the benefits to society that PlyOps technology provides. We take cloud computing services for granted today, but there are still billions of people who are not able to benefit from these services yet. The cost of these services is still prohibitive for the people who arguably have the most to gain from them. And with costs rising, there's no incentive for the providers to extend into these lower revenue areas. Dramatically lower cost cloud-based services powered by PlyOps XDP can change this. A farmer in a developing country able to sell things in an online store rather than traveling to a dwindling market. New platforms for healthcare. Open communication for those most in need. Multiplying the effectiveness of data centers to store, manage, and analyze data with PlyOps Extreme Data Processor will multiply the impact on our lives. We're excited to drive global change by transforming data centers with PlyOps XDP. Today, we are already helping some of the largest companies in the world to leverage the power of their data while dramatically multiplying their performance, reliability, capacity, and efficiency. Come join us on this journey and multiply your impact. What, what will you do with the power of X? Thank you very much to everyone for joining us and watching the PlyOps uh, presentation. We have some great questions that have come in from our audience. And we have Steve Fingerhut here to help us answer those questions. Steve, thank you again for bringing this uh, great presentation to us and to our audience. Thank you, Scott. And thanks to everybody for joining and watching the event. Um, before we get started with Q&A, there's two things we want to tell people. Number one, if you have questions, please make sure you ask them. Um, we will be take, continuing to take questions, um, and we want to make sure we get your question answered uh, if it's something that um, you feel you'd like to understand. Second, we've put a poll question up on the screen. We want to learn more about you. What, what's primary challenges? What's the most critical pain point you're facing in terms of your data center infrastructure right now? And Steve, I think that it's important to get started with something sort of basic, but I think it's important for people to understand. And that's why PlyOps? What's the name mean? And I think that's a great place to start to, as an introduction to PlyOps. Absolutely. So we get that question a lot, and it's, it's pretty simple. So plyo is a Greek word for many. Uh, and IOPS, of course, we all know IOPS, input, output, operations per second, a very important term in storage and networking. So given our focus on performance uh, and storage, we combine those two to, uh, to create PLAPs. Perfect. You know, another thing that's really um, a common question when we see something that's particularly, um, appears to be particularly revolutionary is, what does this mean for my existing environment? Like how easy and how seamless is it to, um, to drop this thing in? And so the question is, is for my database applications, do I need to make changes in the software to work with PlyOps XDP? So uh, yeah, in terms of uh, software changes, um, we, we uh, use the NVMe driver that uh, manages all of the IOs to and from the device. We have, because of the way we uh, manage the drives, and there's a few other questions that we'll answer on that, 
um, but we do have a thin agent that manages the IOs from our device to the SSDs, whether they are locally attached or disaggregated or network attached drives. So, um, and then what that means though, from your application software, you, you saw the two ways we can, you can use our product either through a block interface or through a native key value interface. With the block interface, it shows up just like any other storage device in your system. So absolutely no changes to your software works uh, with, with every application that will run on Flash. Um, with the KV mode, we actually provide a, uh, uh, the APIs that are currently used in your software today. And so for many applications, we can, uh, per, we can drop in with really no recompile needed. Some others may require a little bit of change there. Uh, but the main message is no application changes required for uh, for block access, which gets you all of the benefits that you saw here today. So um, no application changes required most of the time. Let's talk about drivers, and this is going to kind of follow on to what you just said. And the question is, do, uh, does the fact that it has a standard NVMe interface mean that there's no new drivers needed, or might there be extensions to Linux drivers for configuring or using XDP-specific features? Right, and so that's a great just clarification to the, my last answer. And the answer is uh, there, there are additional uh, drivers present that um, a thin layer that manages just the IO transfer from our device to your SSDs. And that's an important point, which is what that makes possible is w the PlyOps XDP works with any SSD uh, that, that you're buying today or wanna buy in the future and all of your management, all of your um, security, everything can be managed as you do today and, and basically does not need to be changed uh, for PLAF. So that's the, the uh, benefit. But short answer is there is a, uh, 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 an additional driver present. So another question we have is, does PLAF's XTP work with higher performance Intel Optane SSDs and what improvements would my application see using such devices? Great question, and the answer is yes. And we have uh, more information uh, that will be coming soon to our website. And uh, we have done extensive testing with that. And we see, right, with, with any fast device, as we talked about, right, you move from a hard drive to an SSD, the problem moves to your, your CPU and becomes the bottleneck. That is also true with Optane. You put an even faster media like Optane in and uh, the, the, the CPU just can't keep up with it. So with uh, PlyOps managing the Optane uh, devices, we can get, we actually get higher performance, lower latency, uh, and the, the performance per core, meaning per processor core, um, goes up by either 3X, anywhere from 3X to 8X, and that's whether you, you, you're using compression. So if you, with the 8X, basically what you're saying is you're, you're uh, using PlyOps compression, you're getting much, much higher performance per core, and all of that is uh, storing data much more efficiently. So you're, get, you're able to store three, four, five times more data on that Optane device than you would without PlyOps, as well as keeping all of your processors to manage the application that's generating all that data uh, for the Optane. So, uh, We'll have a lot more information on that coming soon, and uh, but but short answer is yes, um, and and ready to work with that today. Um, speaking of compression, we have a question specifically about compression. Um, the questioner asks, as well says, there are always trade-offs with compression. What are the expected limitations um, when it comes to um, using compression in PlyOps? Right. So the traditional trade-offs in compression are, you know, number the, the biggest one is that it is consuming your host resources, your CPU resources to manage that compression. Uh, and uh, the second is there can there can sometimes be a performance or latency impact. Um, every benchmark you saw in this report and every one that you see on our uh, site uses PlyOps with compression enabled. Uh, and so the the because everything is fully offloaded to our device, there is no trade-off. If if you want to, th so so really no trade-off. Um, and because of our architecture and a uh, a tremendous amount of compute that we apply in our 
uh, extreme data processor that essentially eliminates any trade-off from uh, the host application and you get extremely efficient uh, compression and packing of that data. Uh, we've actually done multiple benchmarks where we'll, we'll have host compression running. For example, database has a, it will have a, like a MySQL or SQL server will have a uh, compression feature. We turn that on and with PlyOps, we can get a further 50% space savings over if, what would happen if with just host compression alone. So it's extremely fast, extremely efficient, and results in no trade-off from, uh, from the application perspective. Um, you mentioned um, offloading a little bit here. So we're going to ask a question about that now. Um, the question is, does the PlyOps XTP offload the hypervisor networking security and storage tasks from the host CPU and how does it differ from what VMware and NVIDIA are doing with Monterey? Right, that's a great question and uh, really gives us an opportunity to talk about how we work with uh, Project Monterey is a, is a project from VMware where they enable their, uh, their VMware software to work with what's called DPUs, data processing units. So NVIDIA has one called Bluefield and Bluefield 2. As you can see from the video, we're working very closely with NVIDIA. They're an investor and a partner. Um, and so we, we work in conjunction with that DPU. So what the DPU is focused on is as the, the, the question asks the, uh, about offloading key elements, storage, networking, security to a dedicated isolated device and that improves performance, it improves security. However, uh, from an architectural perspective, it's really that offload is really just moving it. It's moving it from the host, which is typically x86 processors to the dedicated uh, processors and accelerators on that DPU. But if you run the storage related uh, benchmarks, the application related benchmarks, you'll see you're going to still see the same bottlenecks um, that are present in the host. You're going to see those on the DPU. So working with uh, the PlyOps XDP, we can uh, basically achieve these very, very high performance numbers. And uh, from a storage perspective, we are accelerating the storage functions of that. And then the DPU is doing what it does best, which is around network and security. So uh, short answer is we work uh, very well with that. It's a perfect combination um, and allows for even greater efficiency in uh, virtualized environments. We have one more question that I'd like to bring forward around um, acceleration, and then we'll have a couple around data protection and actual uh, resiliency. Um, the first question is, can PlyOps accelerate direct attached and network attached storage? Right, and that's, uh, I touched on that earlier, and the, the short answer is yes. Um, so because we are, we are, our mode is to, uh, to manage the operations to the storage through that thin software layer, that means that we can work with any block device or any block volume. So if it's a local NVMe uh, SSDs, it could even be SAS, even SATA, uh, if people are still using that, or it can be <clears throat> network attached, iSCSI, uh, NVMe over fabric, NVMe over TCP, uh, all of those are, are uh, are possible and supported by uh, by this product. Um, before we do the next questions, let's chat about the poll question we just asked. Um, we got some interesting results, probably not super unexpected, um, but it was around uh, your most critical pain point. And so most people have said uh, data growth and protection, and those are two of the things that you touched on during your presentation in a pretty significant way. Um, I'm assuming that, and also cost. So. I'm assuming that the results of these of this question are not super surprising to you. Would that be accurate? Yeah, definitely. Um, and we see these all, you know, they're all related, of course, right? The, the data growth is driving the infrastructure costs, the application performance uh, is, is, is doing the same. And I think that the, uh, a key element here is that, you know, companies are generally finding a way to solve this problem. It's just much more expensive than it needs to be, right? And we, we talk to a lot of customers and they, 
you know, for example, you see application performance and latency, a very important issue, but maybe not as, uh, as high as the others. They're, they're getting their performance one way or another. And, and uh, we see a lot of customers that will put a little bit of flash, you know, a, a couple of SSDs on a really expensive server with, with high-end gold or platinum uh, CPUs. And they say, oh, you know, I don't have a performance problem. Well, what they have is, you know, look at number three, a huge cost problem. And they're trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I overcome that? And, and, and they're basically working around this issue, right? You've got the uh, applications driving more and more demand to the SSDs. And uh, basically the CPU gets full. It gets fully utilized before, uh, before it can saturate the SSDs. And so if you want scaling, you have to just then add more and more servers uh, to do that. And so we've worked with a lot of those customers to increase the storage, right? You might keep the same processor because you want all the headroom you can get, or you might use a, a lower cost one, but um, you, can, you can basically rebalance your infrastructure so that you have uh, you know, more, more storage per processor with the PlyOps in the mix than uh, you know, then the total platform is far more capable in terms of performance and storage and, uh, and lower cost even because you've gone from those very high end CPUs, right? It doesn't take much to, uh, to save a lot of money when you start dropping down on the, uh, uh, the CPU cost scale. So, uh, no, really interesting results and, um, uh, not, not surprising. It shows we have a great representation here in the audience. Um, we're going to be continuing to do Q&A. While we're doing that, we're going to launch our next poll question, um, which is, how would you like to learn more about PlyOps? So you can check as many of these options as you like. Um, PlyOps has got some incredible resources um, to help you understand um, what they're doing. So we encourage you to, to learn more. Um, we have a couple of questions around resiliency, and I want to start with this one. Um, and it's a kind of a, it kind of li links back to performance. Um, how can I use XDP to increase application data protection from SSD failures? And do I have to compromise on performance? We see with, you know, RAID, for example, um, you know, when there's a when when there's a rebuild, obviously performance takes a hit. How does XD, how is XDP different? Right, and you saw that in the uh, the results, and they might have gone by quickly, but you can you can find more in the handouts that we have here, um, as well as on our website, plaps.com. There's a uh, yeah, zero trade-off drive failure protection. There's a solution brief here, uh, I believe, available to you. Uh, and so, yeah, really, the, that is one of the key benefits uh, is, is data protection. And so today, people, uh, companies will use no data protection at all. So if their drive fails, their system goes down, or they count on software layer, and you have to do rebuilds across the network that takes CPU resources and slows everything down. Or they do something, you know, brute force like RAID 10, which mirrors your drives and, and basically doubles your cost uh, for really no benefit. And so what we've done is our, uh, it's, it's a combination of technologies, right? The fact that we are writing a lot less than uh, with software only solutions, we've eliminated all that write amplification that happens. So that helps us uh, uh, grow and as well as, um, the, the way we manage the data, right? We, we have uh, our, our architects are deep experts on, on flash and SSDs. And so we know how to uh, write that data to an array of SSDs for the best performance and the minimum impact on endurance. And that combination of technologies allows, as we said, right? We, we, we offer drive fail protection, which is our way of saying RAID 5. Uh, even during a rebuild, it's twice the performance of RAID 0. And uh, like I said, it's a combination of factors. If we we have the RAID 5 line there, but you know, so few of our customers actually use RAID 5 with Flash that um, you know, it's, it's sort of an unfair comparison because uh, our, our performance in that case will be you know, 10 or 15 times higher uh, than a RAID 5 during a rebuild. So uh, yeah, so it really is. So both from a performance perspective, um, you don't give up anything. And then of course, uh, there's generally, uh, you know, in all RAID implementations, there's some sort of parity coding that needs to be saved and that takes up storage capacity. We give all of that back to you via uh, our space savings technologies. So that's where, 
For example, if you have 64 terabytes of physical SSDs with Ply apps, you can actually store 128 terabytes of user data and, and all of that data will be protected from a drive failure. So uh, that's when we say there's really zero trade-offs. You get far more performance than you can and far more capacity uh, than you can with, with really any other solution. Okay. Um, on that note, um, if there is a failure, what is the time for a rebuild? Is it comparable, comparable to RAID 5 or is it something different? That comes from Caleb. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Caleb, for that question. And, um, you know, basically it, it's going to be much faster than with traditional RAID 5. And one of the, the secrets that our architects have come up with is the way we manage data, uh, the data placement and the data shaping to the uh, to the SSDs is when there is a drive failure, we only rebuild the actual data that is missing. And in traditional RAID 5, it will actually build the entire drive. And even if that drive is only, you know, the array is only 10% full, it will have to go through a reconstruction of the entire drive. And in the case of PlyOps, we would only uh, rebuild that small percentage of data that is actually missing. Um, and so it can be it can be in the, in the matter of minutes. The, uh, the data you saw there was, um, uh, you know, can be, it, 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 it obviously depends on a lot of uh, factors, but, uh, you know, far greater than even, uh, um, uh, than, than RAID 5 will show. So we'll have, you, we'll have more data in our uh, white paper that you can check out. And then, of course, we'd be really interested to follow up and see how it would apply in your environment. Um, another question related to potential, I mean, hardware failure is if the card has a failure, does data bypass that device um, in some way, shape or form? So I th he has some expl explanatory text here I'll, I'll also read out. If a server has to be rebuilt from a card failure, can it be done without a card present? Are there performance measurements being quoted about? Uh, we can we already talked about performance, but um, so basically what happens when there is a failure um, with the hardware device? Right. That's a, an extremely rare event, by the way. So, uh, but we do plan for that, like like uh, we you would expect. So, and our our uh, reliability is about the same as a Xeon processor, right? So it's uh, it's very infrequent, but of course we want to uh, uh, we we make full accommodations for that. So, number one, if if you know different ways of failing, right? One is that the system shuts down in an unplanned way, sudden power down. Our card all data is fully protected in that case, right? We we save all data in flight, and when the power is resumed, we we uh, resume normal operations, and all data is is uh, fully persisted. And in the in the rare case that uh, the card fails, then really the simplest way is to uh, replace the card, and um, uh, we have a small flash device that keeps all the the data protected on the card itself. You move that to the new card, resume, uh, and uh, and all operations are are back to normal. So yeah, there would be. Uh, so that's really the the recommended way of going, and um, and is is very seamless, very easy, and you know works uh, as you would expect from this type of product. Um, we have another um, performance question, and the question is, are there preferred drive types or manufacturers that you recommend for maximum performance or capacity? Right, and I wanted to take that question because uh, to um, basically say, uh, no, there, there are really no restrictions on the drives you can use. We, we will validate drives that our customers use. We have a, a long and growing list uh, of validated drives and but really you can use whatever you're using today we're not involved in uh, directly managing the drives so in terms of you know when do they go bad uh, uh, do they need to be replaced uh, all that kind of management that happens that that is really uh, is untouched by PlyOps and uh, security all of those things are managed uh, as they are today um, and uh, yeah, we, we do validation just to make sure, you know, performance is what you'd expect, those types of things, but it's a, it's a light operation. Uh, and what's nice about that is you can, with the same PlyOps XDP, you can manage TLC SSDs, QLC SSDs, or Optane SSDs. 
uh, locally attached or disaggregated. So, uh, and the one that is getting a lot of excitement from customers is QLC. And we touched on that a little bit in the, in the uh, video, but uh, our, with, with our device, the way we manage uh, rights and uh, uh, which is the sensitive part of QLC, our product performs essentially the same, whether it's a TLC SSD or QLC SSD uh, that we're managing. And so that gives you a uh, significant lower cost. So basically the, the guidance from us would be find the lowest cost SSD you can from your supplier and that's the best one to use with Plabs. We have um, another question here around, well, this is actually around um, how you can use the, the solution is, can Plyops storage be shared and balanced between separate servers and a multi-tenant configuration? Right, and, and the short answer is yes. Uh, the long answer is the, the reason that is possible is we work with whatever your existing system is or, or, or solution is today for that. So, um, you know, think of us as, uh, as another processor in the system, right? We're going to make all of that local storage, um, local processing much more efficient. And then today you already have some mechanism for managing uh, replication and uh, uh, data protection at an infrastructure level. And we work seamlessly with that. Um, and so that's, that's really a, uh, a key differentiator for us is we'll work in, you know, you name it, uh, the environment, we can work in that because we're, we're simply not interfering with that in any way. Perfect. Just checking to see what else we have here for questions. Do you see anything here that was, that you'd like to bring forward, Steve? Uh, yeah, there are a few questions that came up while I was, um, Let's see, I just will move one here about the maximums. And please remember there's a poll question on your screen. We'd like to understand how you'd like to learn more about PlyOps. Um, they've got a pretty fascinating solution here. So we hope many of you um, seek out additional guidance from PlyOps on, on how this may, may uh, benefit your environment. Uh, see, and I might have one here. Three. Um, there's a lot of questions. Oh, here's one, Steve. How do I understand if the PlyOps solution will be beneficial for my applications or storage systems? Like, how do I know I need this? Right. Well, we have more information on that on, on different applications on our website, and we're testing new, new ones every day. Um, and really the best way is to reach out. We'll, we can have a short email exchange, a, a quick call, and we can tell you uh, uh, what it's like. And, and really the answer is if your application runs on Flash, we can help. Uh, and, and the question is, uh, and it's just a matter of how. And, um, and, and, uh, and there is some more information on, on uh, you know, the best applications, the one we have uh, available today or ones that we've, we have customers that have gone through uh, extensive evaluations and are using those in live environments. And, um, and, but it's a big universe out there, so we haven't tested all of them yet. Um, but really, because we have that block interface, because we're uh, solving a universal problem, which is that storage engine, which is a function of just about any application that runs on Flash, that is something that uh, uh, we absolutely can help with. So that's, that's really the short answer. The long answer is uh, give us a quick uh, email, uh, info at plyops.com, uh, drop by our website, and we'll, we'll be happy to just have a quick conversation to make sure uh, we can help. Excellent. And we're going to be choosing our prize winners here um, right now. Please don't forget you have to be present to win. Um, we will be having Angela Rastani, for, uh, Vice President of Marketing at Plyops, announce our winners here in just a minute. Steve, there's a couple questions on encryption. Can you speak in broad terms about, you know, data security and encryption in the PlyOps solution? Right, and uh, yeah, there's, you know, encryption is a complex uh, subject. There's a lot of different ways that companies uh, will encrypt. It can be at the application level, it can be at the drive level, and, and there are, you know, hardware solutions for point-to-point -point, 
Uh, and, and as you're hearing a theme, right, the, the, the best way is to keep doing what you're doing and, uh, and PlyOps will work well with that. And we've seen even where, uh, you know, the number one way customers are using us with encryption is with their, uh, with their uh, security race drives, SED. So um, those basically get managed through the way they're managed today. We get unlocked volumes and we read and write data from them. Once the system is shut down, all that data is secured as it is today. The other we've seen is co customers actually encrypting the data um, ahead of time, and you might think, well, once it's encrypted, um, there's no compression benefit or those types of things. What we've actually seen is that's not the case, that the, the data is encrypted, but there's a lot that isn't. Um, there's padding that goes into uh, storing data, right? If you have a database field, fill it with zeros. If it's not full, that is not encrypted. Those can be um, encrypted in the log files themselves. Uh, and there is another question that came through on on log files, and and the short answer is yes, we can um, accelerate and uh, compress log files at scale. So, um, so I'd say there's multiple ways that companies are working to encrypt their data, and and we can work with all of those seamlessly. Steve, thank you very much for taking this time to answer these great questions from our audience. Thank you. Great questions. And with that, and with that, we're going to move on to the final portion of today's event, which is the giving away of prizes. And for that, we're going to welcome Angela Rastani, Vice President of Marketing for PlyOps. Angela, would you like to announce some winners? Hi, Scott. Thank you. Yes. Uh, thank everyone for joining. We really appreciate it. Uh, as Steve mentioned, uh, we have a brand new website. We would love for uh, everyone to go check that out after the event. Um, I've got some names here for our prize winners. So the first winner of the Lego uh, architecture set of Lincoln Memorial goes to Tim Long of MA, Massachusetts. Congratulations. Uh, this one seems to be one of everyone's favorite. It's the PS5 that goes to PJ Selinski of Arizona. The Sono speaker it goes to Roger DeMary of Texas. The Oculus Quest 2 is going to Jason Shing of California. And our big winner of the e-bike, I have one I have to say, I love it, it's my favorite thing, is Brett Mammon of Missouri. So congratulations and thank you all for joining us. That's my home state. Maybe I'll have to so watch this to house. See, uh, Missouri getting some props. There you go. That's, I'm I'm not there today, but that's where I usually am. So it's it's nice to see it in the news as well. Thank you very much to PlyOps for this excellent presentation. As always, thank you to our audience for joining us for this presentation, um, this special launch event. We always love doing this um, because we br love bringing new stuff to you every day. Um, and again, I have to say it again, but thank you to PlyOps for um, for bringing to us uh, a pretty incredible product, and we look forward to helping educate the world more about it over time. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Thank you, Scott. Thank you.